Welcome back. Today we're doing something a little different. This is the first episode in a new series of App Teardowns, where we take a look at popular iPhone apps and break down how specific features are built. Today we're looking at SoundCloud for iOS. SoundCloud is a very popular platform that has all types of audio from big label full-length studio albums to small podcasts produced independently. One of the things I find really fun and easy to use in SoundCloud is the audio scrubbing. Scrubbing is an interaction in which a user drags a cursor or a playhead across a segment of audio or video. You're scrubbing through media anytime you seek forward or backward to a specific location in audio or video. To fully appreciate what SoundCloud is doing, take a look at how Spotify does the same thing. Spotify is using a stock iOS control called a UI slider. This isn't bad, but when we compare it to the fully customized control in SoundCloud, it definitely comes up short. SoundCloud has visualized the track using a waveform, which makes it a lot easier to conceptualize where you are seeking to in the track. There's also more scrubbable area. You get about twice the width of the screen, which makes it easier to get right to that specific section you need. Even though you can increase the fidelity of a slider by panning your finger up while dragging, the SoundCloud solution to me is just more intuitive and more fun to use. So how did they build this? The first thing we want to determine is how much of this waveform view is being constructed on the device. Is it just an image served up from the server, or are they actually generating the waveform data from the audio in the app? Well, as it turns out, it's both. If we look closely at the way the app works, we can be sure they aren't generating the waveform from the audio completely on the device. And the reason we know this is that the waveform is displayed as soon as the track starts, but before the song is even fully buffered. If the song is not downloaded, then there's no way to generate the amplitude data necessary to draw the waveform immediately upon playback, as they do. So are they sending the waveform as an image? It would be possible to do that. After all, they do send the cover art as soon as you start playing, and the waveform is likely to be a much smaller image than the cover art. By setting up a secure proxy, we were able to sniff the traffic and see for ourselves exactly what the app receives from the back end. The data is coming through as simple JSON with just three attributes, the most important of which is labeled samples and is an array of 1800 values representing the amplitude or height of each line in the waveform. There are at least two compelling reasons why the engineers at SoundCloud chose this method. Firstly, the entire JSON for the waveform view is compressed into just two kilobytes of data, which is a really small amount of data. If we were to make an image of the waveform that could fit into two kilobytes, it would be so small you could barely tell it's a waveform at all. So they are likely saving a lot of money in storage and data transfer fees by keeping this data to a minimum. Remember, they would have to generate at least one image for each of the millions of tracks they store. Those hosting costs would add up extremely quickly. Second, these waveforms are different across different devices and resolutions. If you look at the waveform on desktop and compare it to what's in the app, it doesn't look quite the same even for the same tracks. If these were images, then one waveform image would not be sufficient. They would need multiple in order to support devices of different sizes, and that would further increase hosting costs. Because they are sending the raw data, it allows them to responsively tailor the waveform to the window or device size being used. You can see this clearly when you resize your browser while visiting soundcloud.com. Which brings us to building this control. There are a couple things we won't focus on for this teardown. First, we won't discuss how to translate audio into amplitude values. That is something fairly complicated and you can likely find a library out there to do it for you. Second, no matter how long the track is, they always send 1800 samples. And from there, the clients like the web browser and the apps downgrade the fidelity by grouping and averaging in some way that doesn't over-normalize the values. By inspecting the code on their website, we can see what trigonometric filters they are using, but it's really not core to what we're doing here. To that end, we've taken the first 340 values from the 1800 sent from the SoundCloud backend, and we've put them into a spreadsheet with a simple bar chart so we can see what our goal should be. This is what the data they send for Childish Gambino's track 3005 actually looks like before it's downsampled by the front ends. If you go and listen to this track, you'll notice that this waveform 
actually looks more like how the song sounds. In the beginning, it has a lot of stops and starts, and this waveform looks like it does too. This is our goal for part two of this episode. We will take these 340 samples and create a waveform that a user can drag forward and backward while indicating where the current playhead is. Come back next week to dive back into this project and see exactly how this is done. Until then, feel free to share, thumbs up, and subscribe. See you next time.